What's going on, everybody? On today's show, we're going to run through the news, the notes, those waiver wire. Look, it's a little slim this week, but we talk about how we're handling this week and looking into the future and a lot of very interesting trade speculation going on with the NFL deadline approaching. Don't miss a second of today's show. What's happening, Foot Clan? Want to remind you about jointhefoot.com, our community, our, our base of listeners who help support this independent podcast. And for that support, you get extra cool things all month long, access to premium projections, an extra show every single week featuring only your questions, our stream finder that we just put up there helping you find the, the best plays of the week and tons more. Like We're putting up tools Almost every single day, it feels like. We got new stuff we're working on. We're hitting the lab hard. Check it out. Jointhefoot.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, I've got nothing. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, oh, welcome in to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Step aside, old man. I'm jumping in here. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Welcome to the podcast. I'm joined by Jason Moore. See, that was all part of my Halloween costume. I went as a, um, a ghoul. Yes, I'm, we're joined by the rotting carcass of Andy Holloway, who sips I'm fine. His tea. I'm totally fine. Yeah, yeah. I've seen. I've seen better. You know, I wouldn't have gone for it except for yesterday. I got so much flack for like, you know, it's Monday. I didn't do like a long intro and welcome people in. That they get really emotional about it. They were very mad at you. They get very depressed and sad because I gave them a really short intro. Oh, I, I well, know. Now, now you know why. Mm -hmm. You they gave you flack and then you gave them the phlegm. Yeah. That wasn't that was a good even trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing well, <laughs> doing well. Jason, uh, Jason, you got all of what September? To, yes, to be uh, sick. September was mine. I was sick the entire month. Um, we'll see how long you can go I'm into totally November. Totally fine. I'm a hundred percent. Welcome in Tuesday, October 29th. Got some reaction to the Monday night football game to share with you. It's a waiver show, and I think you know this is the time of year when it's. So important to start to do some planning. Yes. And there's different things to plan for. One of them is streaming quarterback position for some of you, defense for many of you, but also matchups. And what I mean is in your league, you know, wherever you're sitting record-wise right now, there's a handful of weeks left before the fantasy playoffs. We're going into what, week nine, right? Yep. And you know what the schedule looks like. You know what opponents you have on uh, on the docket, and you might have a really really difficult matchup three weeks from now. Maybe you got a couple easier matchups, but you can start looking ahead on your schedule too when you consider things like streaming defenses, streaming the quarterback position, even trades heading into the trade deadline. Mm -hmm. You can be looking at your bye weeks. One of my favorite things to do, and if your trade deadline is is approaching exactly what Andy is saying. Look at a, a difficult opponent and see if you've got a bye week in that week and see if you can trade him to that person. Flip the bye week in a matchup yeah. from your team to their team. It's glorious. Yeah, this waiver show is – there's not really a top super sexy pick this week. This is, this is more of a – How we're, dare you? We're <laughs> You're forgetting about the Los Angeles Chargers wide receiver core. Oh, I apologize. Thank Jason you. Moore? Yes. Oh. Uh, th this this waiver period's more about investing. You're you're looking at some penny stocks. You're looking at some things that are not real volatile. Nothing has broken out that you really have to grab this week. But Andy's right. You're looking for a couple weeks down the road. Maybe maybe you are looking at your playoff matchups. I'm, I'm starting to peek at them. I'm starting to get my defenses ready. Yeah, and, the, and it depends and a lot. handcuffs. Yeah, handcuffs. It depends a lot on it's what insurance your, time. your record is. And you can turn a, you know, turn a dial here, turn a dial there. It might make the difference in winning a couple more matchups, and that will affect your seeding for the playoffs and things like that. So uh, it's going to be a fun show. We've got full stream ahead. We've got defensive streamers on the show. We've got the waiver pickups. 
some news to get into. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. If you want to follow any of our individual handles. Oh, man, it's it's lit on the gram. You've got uh, Jason at Jason FFL. <laughs> I'm at Andy Holloway. Mike is at FF Hitman on both Instagram and Twitter. I've had some people criticize me for not posting when I said yes. Uh, it just refresh. It's, I'm sure <laughs> it's, it's there. So keep <laughs> checking. It's 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 gonna be hot. It's gonna be an awesome gram. You are just so into Instagram culture. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's who I am. Meanwhile, Fa- high fashion and Instagram culture. Yeah. You're not posting. Meanwhile, people ask, "What does the FF stand for?" And usually, you think fantasy football. Not on IG. It actually stands for fire follow. Because my yeah. my my feet is hot. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm not. It didn't really make me want to follow you anymore. Footclangiveaway.com. Two days left to win a signed Saquon Barkley jersey from Pristine Auction. No, your your Instagram isn't just feet. It's feet and dogs. Yeah. Feet and Daisy. Your yes. new your new puppy. <laughs> That's right. I'm always in flip flops, so I won't do that to you, Foot Clan. Oh, please no. <laughs> You're bringing a new. A new uh, man. If you had an Instagram shoe of the day, but it's just your feet. It's just me wearing my same flip flops every day, <laughs> just with a comment like, "Here I am again." Right. Ooh, got a little fungus today. It's getting cold outside. <laughs> I mean, you don't still rocking the flip flops. You don't do anything with your Instagram, so you might as well just have f- foot after foot after foot. Do you have flops on right now, Jay? You're done right. I okay. do. It's 42 degrees. It's outside. It's 45 degrees out, and. And we, what, what did he say right before the show started? It's freezing. It is very cold. <laughs> Me, I'm in, I'm in jeans and my shoes, and Jason's over here probably in shorts and flip flops. You know it. Why is it so cold? You've never made the correlation between the temperature outside and what you wear affecting you. Because I'm not outside. I'm inside. <laughs> okay. All right. Last night's game started hot for the Dolphins. And that was it. And they quickly. <laughs> they took matters into their own hand. If you have ever played Madden, if you've ever played any football game of any type, and it's third and long, third and 22, you don't send a run blitz where you're going into single man coverage, everyone else is blitzing, because that's a stupid thing to do. the Deontay Johnson play? Yeah. Yes, they knew what they were doing, and you will never convince me otherwise. They like, I <laughs> like Booger's reaction was, "Whoa, that's that's seems like the first bad move that Flores has made all day." No, that move was excellent for their long term goals. There was I, only I lost, there was only one way that they could screw that up, and it was blitz everybody. I lost an industry matchup last night because of that Deontay Johnson play. Oh, brutal! I I was I had a nice lead. Um, in our uh, CBS league and all I had to do was play quote unquote defense against Deontay Johnson and he puts up that play but um, Benny Snell exited with a knee injury James Conner was the story of the night James Conner I'm, I'm trying not to be partial because I love James Conner he was a my guy was, he looked fantastic to me last night I know that it's versus the Dolphins so that often can happen and the offensive line really was making things happen for him. But he just – he looked like he had his burst back. He l- looked like he had juice. Uh, but he ended the he ended the game the way he's ended yes. the majority of them. Absolutely. In Matt, Matt Burita fashion. Mm-hmm. But left. at least he put up the fantasy production first. 23 for 145 and one, three catches for a couple yards. Yeah, he had, he had a TD. A, he had a fantastic game, but – Going forward, and this is a waiver wire show, we're going to talk about Jalen Samuels, who's was back in full at practice this week, not active for this game, but should be active next week. James Conner, this is you know reminded to the world by Davis Maddock on Twitter. He has left the game injured in week eight with a shoulder, in week seven with a quad, in week six with a quad slash ankle, in week four with an ankle injury, and week two with a knee injury. This, this dude, I mean, Matt Breed is a good comp. He's like the, the old Shady McCoy, except he doesn't come back in. Um, yeah, th- this is, I he think. Run, uh, he runs violently. That's part of his makeup is he runs really hard. I, I mean, so does Chris Carson, but Chris Carson's not leaving every game injured. So I would say you have to have Jalen Samuels owned because the time is coming. Well, yes. ben, Benny Snell as well. Well, but Benny, he, Benny Snell left. We Do have, we know how the severity of the knee injury We don't. We, we don't know his injury. Well, to me, if Jalen Samuels is back – he leapfrogs Benny Snell 
instantly. But why didn't he on the depth chart last night? Well, because he wasn't it was active. inactive. He, well, that's my my point. Because he was still. Why was he inactive? Because he was still returning. Yes, he practiced in full. But we see this with guys where they, if they're beating their medical timeline, they still will be inactive. Like to me, Jalen Samuels will be active and will surpass Benny Snell again. However, for James Conner, who left with the shoulder injury, the reports so far by like Pro Football Doc, our own Matthew Best, are saying it. It. There was a there was a scare when it was floating around the interwebs that James Conner was worried he broke his his clavicle. That didn't happen. We're looking at an AC sprain joint, uh, AC joint sprain as reported by Mike Tomlin, which means that James Conner should be able to play. That's what that's what Josh Jacobs yeah. had. He missed practice. Get a shot in the shoulder. You're good to go. Six for fifty nine. Devontae Parker, not bad. Juju Smith Schuster. Oh five, yeah. Five for one oh three and one. He is Deontay uh, Johnson, five for eighty four and one. These two seem to have separated themselves from, you know, the Washington Moncrief category of receiver. Can you count on Deontay Johnson? I think it's very difficult to count on Deontay Johnson. That one giant big broken play was against the Dolphins. So in a matchup like this, I think you can throw him out there because he's had, he's had several three good games. Three big plays that were all broken plays. Yes. Um, so I, th I think it's a matter of playing the right matchup versus when, when you say, can you count on someone? I think that's a someone you rely on week in, week out. And Juju, Juju's had a good year. I mean, you know, you, you take yes. away the Devlin Hodges game where everyone couldn't do anything. Um, but also Mason Rudolph, what in the world? He sucked so bad. In the beginning of that game, he was terrible. He looked it, like he didn't belong in an NFL field. Is it possible, though, that he was just really, really nervous? The last time we saw Mason Rudolph, he was unconscious and maybe. leaving the field without a face mask on. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. All right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. The latest in Arizona, Chase Edmonds, likely to miss a few weeks with a hamstring injury. Kingsbury said he's doubtful for th Thursday night. David Johnson, day-to-day. -day, I don't think we're expecting him for Thursday night. I am not. So, Kenyon Drake. Yeah, Drake and Zach Zinner. Drake will get a couple days of practice. Whee! Uh Joe Flacco's out for week nine. Brandon Allen will make his first career start. He could be – Flacco could be out for a long time. This was – it. it so he's, he has the neck problem, and this went from he's going to miss a week, we'll evaluate, perhaps they'll put him on the IR, and it trended much faster to IR talk uh, by the end of the day. So Joe Flacco ending up on the IR, will not, on the IR won't be shocking. Well, it, amazingly, he could throw for the same amount of touchdowns on the IR as he's currently doing starting as a professional quarterback. That is true. Three consecutive games with no touchdowns. It's impressive And then work. he comes out in a press conference and – you know, criticizes the Fangio, coach yeah, I mean, uh, for not going for it. And then, uh, you know, it's like, well, there might be, you might be part of the reason we're not, yeah. we're not pushing it downfield. However, I do expect Brandon Allen to step right into his shoes and continue to throw for no touchdown. Yeah. That's, it's just a nice thing. Fair. Royce Freeman suffered a minor shoulder injury in week eight against the Colts. Could miss some practice time. That might be why you don't see him out there this week. Kyle Allen will start again for the Panthers in week nine against the Titans. I love this. You love this because I love this because he had such a bad game, and you and so the the narrative is okay. We can we can go back to Cam because he had a bad game, but they're not going back to Cam because Cam's not one hundred percent. And what that says to me is that when Cam comes back, it's not going to be based on Kyle Allen's performance. It's going to be based on Cam Newton's health, and so you can rely on Cam when he gets back, but is, he's not ready yet. Um. The Darius Geis news mm -hmm. was interesting. He is on track to suit up. Now, it's going to be until – it's not till week 11 that he can even come back from the torn meniscus he suffered early in the season, went on IR. But they expect Darius Geis back in week 11. It's interesting because this team's entire identity for the remainder of the season is going to be the running game. Yeah, and this is why we talked about that. This is an investment <clears throat> investment waiver period where – yeah, Geis is not able to play for a few weeks, but you can grab him for free right now. Okay. And then um, Mahomes has a chance to return in Week 10 against the Titans. 
So monitoring, apparently he wants to play. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, it's one thing to, to want to play and realize you're limited. He thinks he can play. He was practicing. He thinks he can play. A lot of people, but thought, this is not week ten. Exactly, I was going to say a lot of people thought based on him being at practice last week, he was going to be able to play this week. It's not happening. What when he was at practice last week? It's not like he was, you know, participating. He was just there. Doing, All the first team reps was Matt Moore. Yeah, doing his Man. rehab. Really weird. I mean, this is very rumorville, but it's coming from a verified source, uh, Manish Mehta, who covers the Jets for the New York Daily News an ESPN sports reporter alum, apparently the Jets are trying to trade Le'Veon Bell today. Interesting. <laughs> Man, Adam Gase, he does what he won't. That's I, wild. This, um, this, this isn't just a random Twitter account. There's so much money tied up in him? Uh, who would Adam Gase him? didn't want him. Yeah, Adam Gase did not want him. I mean, he's even admitted that, saying, well, yeah, I didn't want to sign him, but now we've got him. He's a great player. I'm going to play him. He what? did not want to sign him for that money. Interesting. Well, the deadline Man. for the NFL uh, is, today. is today at, what, 4 Eastern? Yeah. So I just a matter of hours from now. I can't imagine there's a team with both the cap room to take that hit, the need, and the record. You know, when I think about the teams that need a running back, they can't afford him and wouldn't do that with their current record, I'm just not sure if that could get done in a matter of hours. It's what a, if they trade him for Melvin? I I don't think that the Chargers want to pay that much for a running back. Sure. I don't think it was just it's, because it was Melvin. This, this is wild, wild stuff. If if somehow this happens, then Ty Montgomery kind shoots of a, up the waiver chart. It's kind of a strange thing to talk about because the deadline is going to come and go. A lot of you probably won't hear this until the deadline's come and gone. So yeah, we'll, but people on here we'll react to it. We'll report. Well, we won't know what the news is, is my point. We can't, <laughs> if he's, we can't react to the, Let's react to each team trading for him. Begin with Arizona. I mean, we're not. I gonna, don't think Arizona's going to make this move. It's a strange move after acquiring Kenyon Drake. <laughs> they want all the running backs. They've also had interest in Melvin Gordon. Next. All right, the Baltimore Ravens have acquired. <laughs> No, it's interesting. We'll find out what happens. We'll have all trade reaction tomorrow, anything that happens at the deadline. Miles Sanders not going to miss time with the shoulder injury. Deshaun Jackson will return to practice this week. We'll monitor that because it's just a trepidatious place. It's really good news for Carson Wentz they, if he's back out there. It's a huge swing for the Eagles and their fantasy value of Carson Wentz if DJX comes back. The Chargers have fired offensive coordinator Ken Wisenhunt. There's a lot being said about the fact that uh, this team, Anthony Lynn, what he wants the identity of it to be is in part a successful running game that they haven't been able to manifest under Wisenhunt. Wisenhunt's the fall guy for a team that's yeah. under 500 right now. But at the same time, uh, this could mean a change in philosophy, strategy, uh, offensive play calling. We saw what effect that had on Adrian Peterson. I'm bringing it up because maybe brighter day. Look, something changing has to be good. For Melvin Gordon, you're not going to go in a in a worse direction, I think, in the running game. So it's possible that this is a good thing. It's Maybe. Possible. So um, Marquise Brown on track to suit up. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Get it, get it, get it. And then you'll uh, you'll see that big Lev Bell trade yeah, to the Bengals. Remember uh -huh. that one? Oh, I can't believe they traded. Why would they acquire? Mixon. Why <laughs> they mix <Mixon>. in? <laughs> All right, we're going to get into the waivers. Before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor, keeping the lights on. We're talking about Zapier. When you're running your own business, I think uh, all of you out there, you know, your to-do list is never ending, but you can automate many of the tasks that you can do, uh, but maybe you don't know how. And that's where Zapier comes in. They, they uh, are the easiest way to automate your work. Here at the Fantasy Footballers, I've used Zapier for this business since the day we started. Mm -hmm. So you're going back five years, uh, well before they were a sponsor, but I'm not surprised they've grown because they work with more than 1,500 business applications. The possibilities for automation are virtually endless. We do a ton with Slack, automating processes, giving us information about things from our website to the servers, whatever the case may be. We automate a ton of things with Zapier and you can join more than 4.5 million people who save an average of 40 hours per month using it. We love it. Right now, through November, try Zapier free for two weeks. 
by going to zapier.com slash footballers. That's Z-A-P-I-E-R dot com slash footballers for a free 14-day trial. Put me in, coach. All right. Let's get into it. Returning from the bye, the Ravens, the Cowboys. Welcome back, Lamar. Yes. Dad. We've missed you. This week, the Falcons, Bengals, Rams, Saints on bye. Let's start at the wide receiver position. Who are the main pickups uh, in your guys' mind? Oh, good. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, uh, look, there's a lot of different players that are all, to me, in about the same tier. So I think primarily – the, the first bit of strategy on waiver wire wide receivers is lower priority. I would not burn a waiver priority for any of these guys personally. And when I'm going in, uh, you know, when I'm going after one of these players in a fab, I'm probably ordering these guys in the order I prefer them and putting like $1 bids on most of these players because – so Devontae Parker had a game like he's been having pretty much every single week – um, this coming week plays the Jets, and if Ryan Fitzpatrick is still the quarterback, he's, as he should be, as yeah. he should be, there's no reason he wouldn't be. Devontae Parker has pretty good upside, you know. But uh, would you? What about Danny Amendola against Oakland, who's you know coming off of 19 targets the last two weeks for Danny Amendola? His season has been very bizarre, where. He opened up week one, 13 targets, looked like, okay, Matthew Stafford has his new Golden Tate best friend in the slot, and then and, and Amadola just was Houdini for about a month, and then he's been extremely strong the last two weeks. 105 two weeks ago against Minnesota, 95 this past week against the Giants. Amadola's interesting to me in a PPR They're if you're trying to fill a bye week. Yeah, I think – those qualifiers really helped me at the end there, Mike, because well, like, PP, he's not, he offers you some things. You're, you're already rolling the dice at times with somebody like Marvin Jones, right? Because if the, if the wheel doesn't come up on Marvin, which is pretty much once every four weeks or three weeks, then you're disappointed. Same thing with Hawkinson. And with Amendola, you don't get the upside of being kind of like, you know, at least Parker can find himself in the end zone. It seems like Amendola is not going to. Like, for example, my money league, I've been rolling Julio Jones and Robert Woods. They're both gone this right, week. Like, right, they're in with the Saints in there. Michael Thomas, like there's there's big time wide receivers who are missing right now. Wouldn't you rather? Uh, I'm, I'm curious. Would you rather start Kenny Stills? Hmm. Against because Jacksonville, Stills, you know, Stills, you've got the big play capability. You've got the uh, nearly 100 percent of snaps. East over Amendola, you're saying? Yeah, correct. Yeah, if it depends on what my wide receiver two is that I'm trying to fill in. But Kenny Stills, I'm I'm not out at all on him despite Kenny Bills coming up bankrupt this past week. Oh, man. Yeah. I think he's going to hit – I mean, those that signed him, he's going to hit a lot of waiver wires this week. Sure. I mean, Kenny Stills will. He yes. will be – when you do drop it like it's hot and you look at who's there and who – you know, people will pick up a Devontae Parker or a Chris Conley – and or Deshaun Hamilton, and then Stills will be the guy that hits the waiver wire. Yeah, they will. And I would much rather have a free, you know, zero dollar bid on Kenny Stills the following day than I would pay up for one of these one of these players. Um, I think people are excited potentially about Josh Reynolds in the event that Brandon Cooks misses an extended period of time. We've got the bye week. Yeah, if if we're talking about this week, you can't do it because he's on bye. But Josh Reynolds, if you're investing in some potential for the next couple of weeks with Brandon Cook's concussion history it w it will not be surprising for him to miss a couple of weeks look at what it's going on with Sterling Shepard in New York I think there's a, a pretty strong correlation between those two situations so yeah if you're if you're good this week then Josh Reynolds is is interesting although his schedule Pittsburgh and Chicago is not not the greatest. And, and Andy, you mentioned Chris Conley in passing, but that's yeah. another name that is He's absolutely in play here with all the Devontae Parker, Danny Amendola, Kenny Stills talk. Um, I would I would say the only other two players that are very much in play that are widely available are Chris Conley and Darius Slayton. These two guys are, you know, situations have changed. Chris Conley, I assume if D.D. Westbrook is out. In, he, yeah, I think he is out. He becomes against Houston – Whose defense just oh, this, lost? Sorry, I was looking at 
versus the Jets. JJ Watt. Um, he's you know he's a freak, a talented guy, and Gardner Minshew's been getting it done. They pulled Westbrook out of that game. He was already questionable heading into it, and the injury was actually um, a re-aggravation of the same injury. So we don't know how severe it really was because they pulled him out not wanting it to progress. But Conley's interesting in that kind of big play capability. The yeah. message that I'm getting here from the names and from you guys is you're not going to spend – you don't want to invest a bunch of fab at the wide receiver position. You might want to just take the best of what's available, look at – see if a guy like Stills gets dropped the next day. You're kind of uh, throwing a dart in as far as, hey, well, am I going to get a bigger game out of Conley versus Slayton versus, you know – Hardman is another player that, okay, well, he probably got another Matt Moore week. And maybe it's a big week for Hardman. You could do worse. So who's your – who would be your number one? Who would be your guys' you're, – you're, you're putting all these guys up, let's say $0 bids. Right. Who would you prefer to have first? Well, I mean, Kenny Stills. And then number two, but it's it, it's based off of D.D. Westbrook. If D.D. Westbrook is out, I would say Chris Conley would be the – Number two for me against Houston. I really like that matchup for Gardner and the, and the wide receivers. A, and then A.J. Brown would be number three for me. Dude, why is Tajay Sharp on the field so much? I don't Taking, know. I mean, A.J. Brown, his snap counts are hurt. They should be – his snap counts – he should be on the field all the time. I mean, the only thing he's shown as a rookie is that he can hang in this league – but they're not putting him on the field. It's it's infuriating. That's the reason I'm not totally in on A.J. Brown yet. I get it. I think he had three targets this last week. To me, my number one claim would be Devontae Parker. Okay. Devontae Parker has been quietly really yes. good. He had three touchdowns and back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games until this last week where he still had eight targets, 59 receptions. And that was against a really good Pittsburgh defense. So coming up against the Jets with Fitzpatrick, the air yards are there. He'd be my number one, which is... Gross. <laughs> but this is the world we live in. What about you, Andy? Who would be your number one of this group of mediocre wide receivers? Yeah, I mean, I probably, the way that I play, I probably have the mindset of going to try to hit a home run with a Hardman or a Conley or Stills. I'm looking at a big play. I want a difference maker. I'm not trying to buy two catches. It, it's what would dissuade me in a non-full PPR from a Beasley or an Amendola. Um, Brooks, can we get a, an advanced copy of all the deadline moves real quick? An oh, advanced man. copy. Mm, yeah, just yeah. of everything that's going to happen before the deadline. How, how are your time traveling skills? I'll get back to you on that. Mm, no. I bet you're going to wait until about like 4 Eastern. Maybe. The nice thing about time travel is even if it takes <laughs> the, him the years. The nice thing about time travel. Well, no, even if it takes him years really to true. figure it out, we'll never know. Right. It'll be He'll just come back. Now. <laughs> Did you do it? Are you talking about that big trade where Lev went to the Steelers? Oh, man, you know I can't believe they gave up Juju. So <laughs> That was nuts. By the way, the in the article, the teams highlighted Texans, Chiefs, Bills. Here's the thing that's kind of interesting, too. As a fantasy owner, you've got to start getting your mindset to go two directions here. Because your brain also goes, uh, Ty Montgomery. Yes. Doesn't your brain go right to – I mean, if Lev Bell's moving, Ta you've got to be thinking about – Ty Montgomery would be the number one waiver pickup. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's why I was bringing up the rumors because uh, people need to know how we think about Ty Montgomery. And it's I would be crazy interested. He'd pretty much be almost all my fab. Yeah. Uh, you know, I save a couple dollars no matter what for the playoffs, but almost all my fab and definitely the first waiver priority if that were to happen by tomorrow. Yeah, I think that that's actual – that's a nice prescription we can actually give, which is – we don't know where Lev's going if he's going. But if he goes, and you, you're you listening to this any time on Tuesday, you've got time to put in a bid yeah. for, for Ty Montgomery. But I just did time travel, and uh, it's, it's very unsurprising. I didn't he even was, see you leave. Yeah, well, that's the thing about time travel. And uh, oh, he man. didn't. He doesn't get traded. Okay. So there's that. <laughs> it seems I should have come back like 10 minutes prior. Yeah, you could have just we stopped this whole discussion. And we could have avoided that whole discussion, but my bad. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. The inconvenient time traveler. That's his name. <laughs> That's the he name of my autobiography. To tell people what's going to happen, but 30 seconds too late. Yeah. You're going to fall out the wind. Oh, oh, man. I knew it, though. <laughs> Called it. Called it. <laughs> and That's, That's what he said. That's your catchphrase. 
All right, running backs. <laughs> running back waiver pickups. We said Ty Montgomery. I hear Al Borland just cackling <laughs> over there. He's very tickled. Um, Look out for the piano. Oh, Called it. <laughs> Called it. I love the catchphrase. <laughs> Got to have a good catchphrase. The, the number one running back situation here is based on the trade that did happen, which is Kenyon Drake leaving, going to Arizona. This opens up things for Mark Walton. We saw that last night. He looked okay until the fumble. But obviously, Kenyon Drake for this week on a short week in a bad matchup. Would you rather spend your waiver priority on Drake this week in a bad matchup against? And I and I do mean I want to stress this bad matchup. Do you like that more than taking a shot at Jalen Samuels in a conjure, uh <laughs> Jalen Samuels in a Connor injury? I'm not into Drake at all. Sam, like if we don't know the health of David Johnson. He is day to day. I we don't expect him this week, but. Is he back next week? And the the schedule of San Francisco, Tampa Bay, San Francisco bye week. I, I I'm yeah. What I'm are you not, actually going to get? I'm not interested in in Drake at all. I'll let someone else waste the fab or the priority to grab him. He he's only available in in 39 percent of leagues. So you know, for most people, it's it's moot anyways. And let's I, get a spot start out there. Who's a spot start for fantasy owners? We talk about. You know, you Jamal Williams buy wins right now. Jamal Williams, sixty-two percent on. Yes, he's he's been you know getting enough carries, and this is a matchup against the Chargers that we have just loved all season for banger running backs. They they, they don't have the personnel to stop him. So Jamal Williams is a is a decent uh, spot start. For Look, sure. I, I may sit on an island, but I've been sitting there for three weeks. Adrian Peterson is startable in all formats. If you need a spot start at running back, he's had three consecutive good games. Buffalo just got ran on by Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders. Sure. Uh, and if you give Peterson enough carries, you will probably get enough. Last week, 14 for 76. You could do worse. I, you could be in the Ty Johnson category of doing worse. Yeah. You could do worse with Jamal Williams. I mean, I, I yes. would rather have Adrian. Pe give me the one guy that's on waivers mm. who is the clear starting running back for a team that wants to run and will even if the game script says they shouldn't. And – this is your last shot with him, probably. Because if guys is coming back in week 11, this is your one game before the bye that you could probably start Adrian Peterson. Look, you could do a lot better, but there's a lot of injuries. There's a lot of problems on teams, and, and guaranteed carries mean a lot. We, yeah. need, we need to know the, the injury status of Matt Burita, but Raheem Mostert yes. against Arizona is 100% in play. Oh, yeah. If, if Burita's out, he's a must start. Then, <laughs> Oh, yes. The Colonel. He's, yeah, I see what you did there, and I the like Colonel, it. Re the Colonel returned. No, I did, did, this matchup for Mostert last week, once again, classic Colonel Mustard. Nine for 60 and a yep. touchdown. He's electric, man. He can make it's, a big it play. It is wild. Like, how do they n not get him on the field more? I think they do. I mean, you saw plays. There were a number of times that they had two players on the field. But, I mean, Tevin Coleman had 13 touches. I'm just – he gets touches when – That's pretty good. When Nine. Burita well, – because Burita left the game. I'm saying when – and then my name's and Jeff then, left as well. Well, it, then Tevin Coleman actually – he he was not really used at the end of that game much. It's just – it it's crazy. He he seems like he's such a valuable player that you want to at least give him a handful of touches. Yeah, in weeks two and three, those were – wasn't Burita out for those games? Yeah, there was, there was injuries involved. 13 carries and 12 carries. Oh, but Coleman was out. I'm sorry. Yeah. You go back a couple weeks against Washington, he didn't touch the ball at all. That, that was – There's was, a risk. Yeah. yeah, there's a risk, but if he – If 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 Breed is out, then yes. I yeah, then he's going to be a good – The only three guys that I feel like I would spend up on, the only three guys that I would say I, they're worth actually not just making a $1 or $2 bid, but burning priority or, or, you know, or something like that would be uh, – Adrian Peterson, Jalen Samuels, and Mark Walton. We we kind of glossed over Mark Walton, but he is a starting running back now for the rest of the season. It's not right. like an injury and this guy's going to come back or hopefully James Conner's out or David Johnson's gone for a while. He's the starter the rest of the season. If you need a spot start against the New York Jets this week, they don't have C.J. Mosley. Uh, they just uh, traded – Names escaping uh, me. Their defensive lineman, Leonard Williams. Thank you. So, I mean, Mark Walton is set up here for a little bit of success. They're at home as well. Man, yeah. Do you this, believe? This, Do you buy in? I'm just thinking more about this Love Bell situation and just how ridiculous things have gotten in New York. That's all. I mean, they're shipping out Leonard Williams. They're going to ship out Love Bell. They've talked about getting rid of Robbie Anderson. 
You know, Adam, Bilal Powell had four carries on Sunday. Yeah, that's that's worth mentioning. And Adam Gaze is he's just he's a ringmaster. Like he just running, but his circus is only clowns. That's it. Yeah, there's no animals. You show up and you're waiting for all of the elephants and bears and and now lions. more clowns. Oh gosh, and there are they're all the sad clowns too. Mm-hmm. They're just a sad. <laughs> Is Matt Nagy buying a ticket to that circus? <laughs> Pretty soon. Goodness. He's reading up, looking into it. All right, anybody else you want to touch on at the running back position? Well, it is it is handcuff season. If you have Dalvin Cook and you've just been waiting and waiting, stop it. Stop it. Alexander Madison should be on your bench. Tony Pollard. Uh, those are the two really important ones. If Wayne you- Gallman. You 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 gonna prioritize them if you have if you have Saquon? Sa- if I have Saquon, I am. Yeah, there there's players that you need the starter to have the handcuff. Like if you're the Saquon older owner, you have Wayne Gallman, but Tony Pollard and more importantly Alexander Madison, like these are guys that should be owned in 100 percent of leagues. They're right. available in the vast majority of leagues still. If Go, something happens, you, they win you your league. You don't yes. need to have Dalvin Cook and Ezekiel Elliott to go grab those guys. Agreed. Put them on your team. Yeah. All right. Tight end pickups. There's some interesting streaming uh, yeah. options. This is actually a decent week for tight end pickups. Starting with, uh, I think, the big ones, Jonu Smith, Chris Herndon. Herndon could return, and if he does, it's against Miami. If he doesn't, he gets to go up against the Giants and then Washington. Herndon needs to be owned in 100% of leagues. Uh, and now the dump off passes are going to be there with Love Bell out of the way. Uh, <laughs> you know, I the, thought you said he wasn't traded. This yeah, is, no, you're I'm back a really in my crappy timeline. time. I'm, a, I'm back. This is this is I'm in the original timeline now. Oh, okay. That other me's gone. <sighs> Call the it. alternate 1985. Yeah. Uh, Jonu Smith, 19 percent owned last week, six for 78 and a touchdown. The thing that I like about Jonu Smith is Ryan Tannehill. Mm-hmm. It makes a huge difference, and Tannehill likes to throw the ball. To his tight end, uh, if you if you remember, long ago, if you take the time traveling machine once again, mm-hmm. he made Charles Clay a top ten tight end two times in Miami. Man, I Jason's forgot looking all at me about like I'm it. crazy, and I'm I not. I remember. It's a hundred percent true. My goodness, I I th- I Before can only remember days. Mr. Necessary in Buffalo. No, Charles Clay was a legit yes. wow. tight end. I believe he had a top five finish with Ryan Tannehill. What? And the thing is, is Jar- Sir. you got to remember, Jar- Sir. Jar- you forget yourself. <laughs> Jarvis Landry, who was Mr. You know, slot guy, yep. hyper-targeted in Miami, he wears number 80. And I think that's confusing for a quarterback. He's like, is this uh, my tight end? Jonu Smith, 81. He's just looking at the numbers here. Jonu slightly larger. S- even better. Just like, look. see him? Those numbers are bigger. I don't want to touch Tampa tight ends. Uh, I don't... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the the OJ Howard in here oh, is he's throwing up the X, the block. So the OJ Howard thing, uh, use, can you use your time machine? Did OJ Howard well, get traded? Right, that's what I was going to bring up. You know, Tampa came out and said they're only going to trade him for a haul, which is still saying they're willing to trade him. Right now, th- that this is news that we need to at least cover the potential of because it's been rumored. If he were to be traded, he would be my number one tight end pickup because nobody's trading for him to not utilize him in the fashion he oh, should I, w- I would I would not be in the same camp. So if the Patriots... I would pick up Herndon or Joni Smith. And you, So the Patriots grab O.J. Howard, one of the best prospects at tight end in forever. You would rather have Joni Smith or Chris Herndon? I'd rather have Herndon. Yeah, I'd rather have Herndon. Wow. I understand the argument against Joni Smith because his time is limited. But Herndon should be a... He should be a top 12 tight end rest of the season as soon as he's back. Is this when, but when's he going to be back? Well, he should. He almost played last week. He would... <laughs> He, he almost played last week to the degree that they put He's him back. as they put him at doubtful for a couple of days before they declared him out. So that, that tells me he's making progress. And we saw Ryan Griffin. I'm not going to just buy into the automatic look. You join the Patriots, you're amazing. That doesn't work for every single player, every single wide receiver. It's not going to work for Mohamed Sanu, most likely. And I don't know if it works for OJ Howard. OJ Howard has had problems with drops. He's going to have problems with the system. They have Watson. They have Izzo. They I think have Jason's point though is if they acquire OJ Howard, it's going to take a first round pick. Doesn't matter more than that. 
You, the, the one thing about the Patriots, yes, it, it, maybe eventually, but the thing about the Patriots is they don't they don't come in here and go, wow, we spent a first round pick on you, and you're the centerpiece of our offense. They say you come in and help us go undefeated, and that could mean two catches. So that this is just my take on sure. it. I think Hernan's a better player. Um, that being said, I don't love Brait even if Howard leaves. If you look at the last like nine or ten games that OJ Howard has missed, where Cameron Brait's been there, they all every single stat line looks like this: three for thirty-two. The question is just whether or not whether he gets a touchdown. Yeah, two for twenty-four, two for twenty-eight, and a touchdown, and a touchdown, or not a touchdown. All right. So where do you like? I like Fells more. And it's going to bring up Dallas Goddard, who keeps getting it done. Both him and Zach Ertz are running a, a whole bunch of, of routes. Three for 22 with the score. A little bit of hesitation with d coming back. Okay. d um, is never coming back. <laughs> I mean, this dude. But if you got to distribute the ball to, you know, Jeffrey, d Ertz, Goddard, I still think the, the predictability of those targets is going to go down. He'll be touchdown dependent. Yeah, I mean, with other good options like Herndon and Jonu Smith out there, I don't think you need to play the Goddard role, but Goddard is a valuable pickup for the same reasons we've been saying correctly the last few weeks, which is he can be a start alone, uh, standalone guy. He can get in the end zone. He's been doing it on the reg, um, and if something happened to Zach Ertz, he immediately becomes – a very important tight end in the landscape. And keep in mind this last week, he ran 55 Whoa! routes. 55! Yeah. Well, that's the real key to success. Thank you. Um, any just passive interest in Noah Fant or no, no. All right. next year. Yep. Full stream ahead. All right, quarterback streaming time, guys. There's some very interesting fellas this week. Yeah, this this week has a, a nice uh, slate for streaming options off of the wire at both quarterback and defense. Um, I'll kick us off here. I, I'm terrified of yours. You're terrified of mine. I am. All right, well, let me explain it to you. Mine is Sam Darnold, the uh, Lev Bell-less and Robbie Anderson-less. <laughs> uh, Sam Darnold, he's playing in Miami. And Sam Darnold is infinity better. He's still a he's still a young, scarable, obviously, <clears throat> quarterback mm. that can bomb. But he is infinitely better than Mason Rudolph. And Mason Rudolph, who just hit, really struggled for a while, still ended up with two fifty and two against the Dolphins because of absolutely wacky broken coverage. There has not been a quarterback this year who has not thrown for multiple touchdowns against the Dolphins it's an 18 to 2 touchdown to interception ratio they've given up the fourth most fantasy points to quarterbacks this is a beautiful get right game for Sam Darnold I I, I believe every one of your stats they're, they're they are facts. factual I believe all the facts I don't like the feel with the Jets right now and if they do lose Lev or Robbie it will not help Sam Darnold so I have my concerns about where this team is trending. I understand all of the, the logic behind that pick. I just consider me scared of, of what's happening in New York. That's all. Um, not that I'm not scared for my stream. I like your stream. But Derek, yeah, I do too. Derek Carr is taking on Detroit. The last three games, by the way. Send in the car. Yes. Send in the car. Yes. You can send in the car this week. The last three games... Quarterbacks against Detroit. This was Green Bay, Minnesota, and the Giants, Daniel Jones. They've given up 10 touchdowns through the air, including four each of the last two weeks. Fantasy points to the quarterback position, 25, 40, 38 in our league scoring format. But you're talking about big performances, huge yardage. Derek Carr has got his weapons back. Tyrell Williams, Darren Waller. Um, he's Hunter Renfro breaking out right. last week. He has the capability. He's doing a little bit of the um, Stafford light of late, being able to throw the ball downfield. I don't, you know, Detroit's going to put up points against Oakland. This is a great uh, opportunity for a, a shootout matchup uh, yeah, between agree. those two guys. The Raiders' offense has been very underrated this year. <clears throat> they're actually they're an above average offense this year, even with the lacking of weapons. Yeah, I, I like the call, and there's still the potential that Darius Slay is traded. There was a lot of whispers about the Detroit cornerback 
So that would just improve things for Derek Carr. I'm, did, you, did you hear what they were asking for? No. A Ramsey-like package. They wanted a Ramsey-like package. So, oh, I'm back from the future. He didn't get <laughs> traded. <laughs> All your, right. your time machine, by the way, takes a very small amount of power. I right. mean, just a few beep boops. and That's you, it. That's impressive. Well, that's just what you hear on this side. Okay. You should see the equipment over there. Okay. <laughs> Very impressive. Yeah. Mike, I like yours. I'm going with Gardner Minshew. He's taking on the Houston Texans. Gardner, if you've not been paying attention, is the quarterback 11 on the season. Uh, he has the fifth most quarterback rushing yards. He's averaging about 25 rushing yards per game. That's an excellent baseline to have. And the Texans have given up the fifth most passing yards and the fifth most fantasy points to the quarterback position. They are beatable. They are now down uh, one of the best defensive players in football. I like Gardner to, Gardner to keep it rolling this week against the Texans. Defense versus offense. Presented by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. All right, if you need a big defensive start for your fantasy lineup, we've got streamers for you. I'm going to go Cleveland. The Cleveland defense against Denver, Brandon Allen, sixth round pick by the Jacksonville Jaguars in the 2016 draft, will be making his start. Was Gardner a sixth round pick? I don't know. Uh, like, yes, he was. was oh, man. Brandon Allen never, never played an NFL down. He will be the starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos. I think this is a beautiful opportunity for mistakes, fumbles, sacks, yes. interceptions, all the things that come with being a rookie quarterback in their first start, all of the, the big eyes that we've seen from, from rookies this year. There's been a lot of injuries at the quarterback position. It's nuts. I mean, my best ball leagues, I, you know, I almost always go two quarterbacks, and this year has been really hurt by losing Cam, losing – Andrew Luck, you know, Mahomes, Pat, Pat Mahomes, out. Drew Brees, Ben Matt Roethlisberger, Ryan. Matt Ryan. It's unbelievable. They're protecting quarterbacks so much now that they're like made of glass. Mm. <laughs> now if you touch them, they crumble. Yeah, it's been bad. I'll uh, jump in. I'm taking the Colts against Pittsburgh. We saw what happened to Mason Rudolph by a terrible defense in the Miami Dolphins. I and the Colts are actually a solid defense, so I like them even though they're on the road, but Mason Rudolph is going to turn the ball over at least a couple times. Yeah, for for me, my streaming defense is the Dallas Cowboys, who are coming off of a bye week, which is always nice for a defense, and they're playing against the New York Giants in a divisional matchup, which a lot of times those games can you know be a lower-scoring affair where it's just a real gritty, hard-nosed, back-and-forth battle. Um, and, you know, if you look at what the New York Giants have done over the last month as far as what they've given up to opposing defenses, they were, they've were they given up the sixth most, the first, the eighth, and the seventh. That's four top ten de defensive fantasy points given up in a row. Now they play Dallas coming off a bye. I, I, I like them a lot, and I also want to throw out the Jets. I know the vibes are really, really bad. But I feel pot committed because I had picked up the Jets and they lose C.J. Mosley. You're not pot committed at all. I'm doing the Mitchell Trubisky thing, aren't I? Yeah. yeah I'm doing some, the thing where they cost. drafted him too yeah. high, and so now it's like I'm, I'm it's bought not, in. You're not talking about it, this uh, an elite defense that you feel pot committed to. But you're you talking can, about the Jets. That being said, you can still – talk about the Jets, man. You can still play them against Miami. Yes. Let me ask you this. How many times has but Miami – Can you play Miami against the Jets? Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, how many times – has Miami given up not a top 12 fantasy defensive performance? Well, I'm guessing the answer is zero. That is correct. They have not yet done it. So you can play the Jets you as well. You can play the Jets. And I think I'm they're a good option. you don't have to love them forever. I would play Dallas over the Jets, but I would play anyone against the Dolphins. Okay. There are a number of interesting options out there. I think Indianapolis this week against Pittsburgh – is uh, that's why it was my pick. Uh, is is a great pick, Mike. And and Thank you, you you also had Denver in there earlier against Cleveland. The the inverse of mine. Yeah, which and it's it's still interesting because Cleveland has been uh, Baker's turning the ball over. He's getting sacked a whole bunch. It was just the the fact that they have Brandon Allen that could screw things up for them. That that's why I pivoted. Short away. fields, yeah. thanks to 
Brandon Allen. Yes. Philly. Philly's a good defense yes. at Chicago at Chicago because they can stop the run, and then the Bears can stop the pass. The Bears have every like they, their offense of... stops the pass. All right, head and shoulders <laughs> offense for great hair. Defense against flakes. Check it out at Walmart.com or at your local Walmart store. That was defense versus offense. Want to thank today's studio sponsor, Everyday Studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, an Amari Cooper signed Nike Vapor football cleat, which is super cool. Mm. Seventy-four dollars ninety-three cents yesterday at Pristine Auction. Use the code Ballers when you sign up, and you get five dollars towards your first purchase. Um, I said it earlier. Follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We appreciate everybody who supports this show via reviews over on Apple Podcasts or listen on uh, Spotify, Google Podcasts, ad-free on Stitcher Premium. Thank you for supporting this show. Good luck on your waiver wire and through the trade deadline. Man, what what incredible trades happened right before the deadline, guys. I can't believe it. Called it. <laughs> beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, Hey, Bookland, good luck tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.